Pfeiffer Police Department. Line is being recorded. Hey, we've had some break-ins in my neighborhood, and there's a real suspicious guy. Uh, it's Retrieve You Circle. Um, the best address I can give you. This guy looks like he's up to no good, or he's on drugs or something. It's raining, and he's just walking around. And he's a black male. Okay. How old would you say he looks? He's got a button on his shirt. Late teens. Late teens, okay. Mm-hmm. Something's wrong with him. Yeah. He's coming to check me out. He's got something in his hands. I don't know what his deal is. Okay, just let me know if he does anything, okay? Over here. Yeah, we got him on the way. Just let me know if this guy does anything else. Okay. <sighs> They always get away. I have an 18-year-old brother who loves wearing hoodies. And the most comforting thing I can think of today is that no matter where he goes, his six-foot-four frame will never be mistaken for suspicious. Neither of us will ever have to worry about George Zimmerman. Worry about being Sean Belled. Worry about being James Craig Anderson on February 26, 2012. The year 2012. On February 26, 2012, a 17-year-old boy in Sanford, Florida was lynched. Lynched for walking while black. Strung up by his chest, bullet crushing his breath. There was nothing about this tragedy that shouldn't rattle your bones, shake you to the core. Nagasaki bomb your heart into a million whys. And what could we do about it to make it bleed? Make it bleed. 1964, make you look up the name of young black boys who never made it to their next birthday. Sean Bell, Emmett Till, James Craig Anderson, Amadou Diallo, James Byrd Jr., Stephen, Stephen Lawrence, Timothy Thomas, Oscar Grant, Trayvon Martin. Do they look suspicious? Tell me, do they bleed criminal? Let me show you a picture of my nephew, Omeka. Joshua Bennett, Carvins Lassan, Hassan Malik, Courtney Lamar Charleston, Kier Jordan, Anwar Jabari Johnson, and dare you to tell me that the inside of each man's heart is not as beautiful as you wish you could be. Does it scare you that they might pick your pocket or does it scare you that they might be able to stand next to you and speak louder than you've ever dreamt of speaking that your chest isn't big enough to hold but the dreams they have lingering on the tips of their tongue does it scare you that they captain planted their way through your glass ceiling? I have a Coretta Scott King complex. I'm still married to a dream. Does it scare you? But you might have to work for a black man one day. Does that scare you? You know what they say. You could take the old man out of the South, but you can't take the South out of the old man. George Zimmerman, the South called. And we want our reputation back, all that progress you took from us. We want it back with interest, with justice that doesn't come in the form of self-defense or castle legislation. It looks more like an eight by eight cell, three square meals a day and an hour of yard time a week. Does that scare you? I wonder if a split second before you pulled the life out of young Trayvon's chest, if your eyes looked like a Don Imus wet dream, did you mutter coon under your breath like you hoped you would? Did you picture yourself a white Ku Klux Klansman in shining armor, a vigilante in sheep's clothing, a martyr of all things privileged and all things left up to a bullet? Did you dream of the last time you dreamt? of lynching a black man, think, this one was a little too small, but you do just find this in the message, that Martin Luther King's message doesn't live here in Sanford, Florida, that you will stop at nothing to rid your streets of young black boys who might grow up to stand next to you at the voters box one day, does that scare you? I'm sure it does. I am not Trayvon Martin. I will never look suspicious. But I do know what it's like to lose someone you love at close range over something worth no more than $10. What that does to their chest. What that does to your chest. George Zimmerman, I am fairly certain Edmund Burke wasn't talking about you when he wrote his memoirs. And I want you to know from the bottom of my heart that you are an outlier. You are not welcome here. 
We do not employ men like you. This seat on the bus is taken. Racist killers need not apply. Turn your citizenship card and don't let the life imprisonment hit you in the ass on the way out. We don't want to live in a world where men like you breathe, so we won't. I promise you, we won't. We will stop at nothing until you are arrested and tried. And I promise you, contrary to popular belief in marches of black men in the streets, there was an army of men who look just like me, who feel the same way. And if there is anything we have learned from you, it is that privilege goes a long way in times like these. And we have plenty of that stockpiled, I assure you.